Good morning, Lord's Church. Okay, well, that's right. It's recording. God is good. Oh, God. And all the time. God is good. Oh, that's good. I like it. I still got the accent. Did you notice? <laughs> Just can't get rid of it. But anyway, poor old Queen. I am a royalist and um, just love to death and love the royalty. The pomp and circumstance, they call it. And you'll see, you've probably seen already the amazing things that they're doing in, in the guys in the uniforms and the bands and the, the guards. And uh, they just, uh, it's a once in a lifetime thing, probably. But I did see it once, I think I was only about 10. But, um, but what, we, what they do is they get all the people in the street on Coronation Day and they have tables like this all lined up together and they have a big street party. Every street has a street party. It's just amazing. Now, I remember that when I was a young kid when she went to the show. Anyway, that's just a little bit of history and news for you. So I should glad I came. Yes. Good to you. Um, we, we have today, we have tomorrow, I should say, there will, will be a church uh, uh, leadership ministry um, work, uh, together at my house, at Jean and Heidi's house, at 10.30 tomorrow morning, anyone who would like to come, this is the leadership, we'll be getting together and discussing things that we can do to improve the church. So you are all welcome to come if you want to. And if I don't have enough chairs, then you can sit in the uh, outside, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, we are ready to go, and I have a special guest here this morning. And would you like this lady to talk to you? Good morning, Lord's Church. Good morning. Good morning. Last week, we introduced you to Stephen Ministry. As you can see by the slide, the motto of Stephen Ministries is Christ caring for people through people. It is God's plan for his people to care for those who are hurting. The mission of Stephen Ministries is to equip lay people to care for those who are hurting. This morning, I want you to hear from some possible community members in need of care. A man says, a sermon is one thing I need, but my heart and my soul, they long to be freed. I have aches and pains, deep wants and great woes. I have feelings and thoughts that no one else knows. My wife died last year, and all that I got was a note on a card and a plant in a pot. No visit, no shoulder, no person came here. I could not cry out or share what I fear. A woman at church sits alone in a pew. The doctor said, there's nothing more we can do. Her pain is so deep, she's imprisoned by fear. She prays and prays more, but no answers appear. Her life's a disaster, it seems most unfair. She longs so for healing, for someone to care. The pastors, they heard the pain in these voices. They knew they were faced with significant choices. They asked one another, what more can we do? The needs are so great, but we pastors are few. We plan and we preach, we lead worship and teach, and try with God's strength all the burden to reach. We hear all the cries and our hearts break within. We know God provides, but how can we begin? We can begin by reaching out, by being trained to help those who are hurting, both in our community of believers here at the Lord's Church, but also in the Lake Henry community. This is an opportunity for you to be trained so that you can care for the emotional and spiritual needs of hurting people. 
This is not a ministry that takes people shopping. It helps them with their household needs. This is an opportunity of meeting one-on-one, -on -one, once a week, to help carry the burdens of those who can't carry them alone. I invite you to come to the information potluck this Wednesday at Pastor Joe's house, 1033 Hook Lane at 5 p.m. Bring a dish to share, enjoy fellowship, have your questions answered. Find out if this is a ministry that God has equipped you for and is calling you to do. The need is great. Please listen to the voice of God as he directs you. I have pamphlets if you want to look at more information before Wednesday night. I look forward to seeing all of you again. Thank you. I'd like to invite Julie to come up now for the call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I knew it was so. I'm <laughs> back here, and I'm looking back there. It's a lovely picture, but it's not our work. It's, it's over here on mine. <laughs> we had this problem last week. We had this. It'll come. Good. We had this problem last week. Because it's real slow. There it is. No. That's going to be screwed up. Maybe we'll get to it again. Um, yeah. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Everyone who serves God, come yeah. and offer thanks. Yeah, it's simple on the Thank you, God, like for your love to you. Everyone who has gathered in this place with your hands, we praise God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for your love in this place. Shout praises to God, for you are God's servants. So shout praises. Thank you, God, for your love to others. All who serve in this place, who serve our God, come and shout praises. I thank you, God, for your love that we can share. Praise the name of our God, who is kind and good. Thank you, God, for your love endures forever. God, we praise your holy name. How your goodness, your mercy, and your love endures forever. Because of your character, we are able to reach out to others. We wait patiently and expectantly for you to move and prompt us in our lives and journey. It is your character we hope to emulate and demonstrate how to care and love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> oh, I have one more thing. In turn, we're talking about praising God, serving individuals. Another very needy thing in this community, and they're desperately needing volunteers for Meals on Wheels. Today is an opportunity to show your love for your community and praise God in doing it. Meals on wheels, they could use you. Thank you. 
if there's anyone who is new here for the first time. Is anybody here who would like to put a hand up for us? And uh, is there anyone who has been here before? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that's a good show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Lord's Church. Good morning. Good morning. Now we're going to stand together and we're going to worship our Lord on this beautiful day here. I'm part of the that in Wyoming, they're, they're having their first snowfall. And my daughter in North Dakota was welcoming the frost. She came off her garden stopping yesterday. Yes. Okay, all we need was. No, don't count on them. We don't have words. <laughs> So we offer it as an offering to you also. Thank you that you will allow us to come together. Thank you that our prayers reach your heavenly throne. Father, on this anniversary of 9-11, we ask that you would be with those who still are, are healing from that horrid morning. Father, there's so many that are hurting. There's so many that are in need of your healing hand, emotionally, 
physically, financially. Sometimes it seems as if we're all alone. But you tell us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we hold on to that promise in the dark times. We hold on to that promise when we're hurting for those we love. So, Father, right now we bring before you the names of those who weigh heavily on our hearts. Hear our prayers, Lord. Deal accordingly to your will in your time and in your way and help us to accept your will for our lives and for the lives of those we love. If they need to know you, Father, we pray that even today you might send someone to share the good news of your son. But help us to be willing to sprinkle, to plant seeds, to share what you have done in our lives so that others will want to know you. Father, we pray for the leadership here in our community. We pray for the leadership in our city, in our state, in our federal government as we are approaching elections. Father, we pray for leadership throughout the world. We pray for the new king as he begins the arduous task of leading his country. We pray for all of those who are mourning the passing of the beloved queen. And Father, then we ask for you to awaken in us a desire to know you better, to serve you, to reach out to the hurting people in the world, the hurting people right here, maybe even next door to us. And Lord, we know that we have your promise that you are always with us. And we have the words of your son's prayer that we share together as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
gifts that it will benefit those who are in need. We think of those who are hungry, Lord. We think of those who are homeless. We think of those who go, uh, even those uh, teenagers that go without food, and that we help, we can help them as well, and help us to bless this food, Lord, and we can do it in your name. Amen. Amen. Greg is going to uh, sing, aren't you? Okay, good. <laughs> I got a 
Because we're not perfect and things are not perfect. It's all right if we could just come together like this and everything would be just all honky dog, right? But um, things go wrong. Uh, we, we, those who want to speak, uh, sometimes uh, forget what they have to do. So we're doing the electronics, they go wrong. And um, so we need patience. And thank God that we are here and we're here in freedom you're not being uh, doing it secretly as many do throughout the world so uh today's uh message uh is based upon uh luke 15 1 to 7. and this is the parable of the lost sheep you've probably heard this many times and you wonder what the heck's going on there but I'll try and explain it the best I can. Uh, okay, uh, verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear, Je to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. <clears throat> now here we are again with, the, with the, our Lord, with the Pharisees. You remember a couple of weeks ago I spoke to you <clears throat> when Jesus was invited to this uh, Pharisee's house and he was in the courtyard and he saw this man who was ill on the ground and uh, of course they were all watching him because the rule was that you cannot work on the Sabbath but Jesus then healed this man so here he is again and they're watching him then Jesus told them this parable so suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. 
I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. And so the title today is, Why Are We Here? Why are we here? In summary, Jesus wants Christians to be together, like a shepherd wants his sheep to reside in flocks. This message reflects on why Christians should share in community with one another. Now, Chaplin accompanied a volunteer militarily led by Benjamin Franklin back in 1756 to defend the Pennsylvania colony against Indian attacks. Franklin led his recruits in the building of a fort in the Blue Mountain region. Once established inside the wall, the chaplain, a zealous Presbyterian, as Franklin called him in his autobiography, complained that few of the men were showing up for his worship service. Franklin, ever the practical man, solved the problem by putting the chaplain in charge of the daily ration of rum. Franklin told the preacher, it is perhaps below the dignity of your profession to act as a steward of the rum, but if you were only to distribute it out after prayer service, you would have that all about you. The chaplain accepted the duty, and Franklin reports that thereafter never were prayers more generally and more punctually attended. That solved the attendance problem, but we might question exactly why those militia volunteers were there. And so, why are you here? And that is a deep question with which people have wrestled with from the beginning of time. What is my purpose? What is my goal and my ambition to be? And true enough, there is the philosophical way to look at that question where the emphasis is upon the word why, but there is a practical approach that gives attention to the word here. Why are you here? A simple question is because you're not anywhere else, are you? In today's parable, Jesus tells the story about a sheep, but not just a sheep, and a, but a flock of sheep. And the passionate work of the shepherd is to get all the sheep together in the same place. I read again, now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathered around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go back to the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home and then calls his friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 religious persons who do not need to Repent. You see, my friends, the Lord is the good shepherd, and we are his sheep of the pasture. And know that the Lord is God, it is He who made us, and we are His, we are His people, the sheep of His pasture in Psalm 103. Preachers sometimes talk to the people who are not here. Rather than tell the people who are not here what they are missing, let's take the approach of affirming to you who are here by being in the flock is so important. Why are you here? in the community with other followers of Jesus. Why does the Good Shepherd want us with the flock, not apart from it? We are here because the Lord came after us, didn't he? 
Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go over the lost sheep until he finds it? You know, my friends, sheep are not pets. <laughs> but what do you do when your cat or dog or hamster is lost? You go off looking for it, don't you? At one time, we were the lost sheep. We were vulnerable and unable to help ourselves. And the Lord came after us. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathering around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord wanted this man welcome sinners and eats with them. In other words, they were deeply religious persons who took their faith seriously. They were in the flock, but they didn't understand no one in the flock without the love of the shepherd. <coughs> And perhaps significantly, the parable isn't concerned about how the sheep came to be lost. Did it wander off unintentionally, or was it taken by thieves or frightened and just bolted? It is not mentioned because it's not important. What is important is that the shepherd's singular concern was to find his sheep before he suffered harm. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. In his Isaiah 53, 6. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Ezekiel 34, 11. And in the parable, the shepherd can be viewed as a standing for Jesus. And what does he do when the sheep wanders off? He hunts it down and brings it back to the flock. Bill Hybels, this gentleman, says, We have never locked eyes with someone that did not matter to God. And there is a natural gathering of similar folks. Some hobbies root out the same team. They love music or certain kinds of music. Some groups are made of folks with similar struggles. And part of our gathering here is because we can sing the same song together. I once was lost, but now I am found. We are here because it is better for us. The word lost is the same word that translates and perish in John 3.16. It means to be lost, ruined, or destroyed. Now this little sheep is in great danger, isn't it? It is headed for ruin. It is headed for destruction. And while finding the sheep was some benefit to the shepherd, it was a lot more benefit to the sheep. We have all seen sheep before. <laughs> you know, they're not exactly the kings of the jungle, are they? They're not easy. They, they are the easy prey for predators because they can't protect themselves. They are slow, they are easy to catch, and on their own, they're in great danger. <clears throat> and we are like them in that there is safety in number. There is strength in numbers. Luke tells us it was Jesus' custom to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath day in Luke 4.16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day in Luke 4.16. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and there three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures in Acts 6, 17, 1 and 2. See, a lot of traveling I have done with groups, maybe you have too, and the common instruction is, do not get separated from the group. In a given moment, it was not easy or made it 
be my desire to stay with the group. We just wanted to wander off, but it is the safest and the best for us when we stay with them. <laughs> The activity with the greatest benefit is really the easiest or most convenient. Now this little girl on age nine, Lorraine, her name was, Dear Pastor, I think a lot more people would come to your church if you moved it to Disneyland. <laughs> I think that's correct. And it is better to remember that we all benefit from the participation in church life. A faith community provides instruction. It gives support, it gives feedback, it gives structure, and it gives us all accountability. You see, worshipping and working, cooperating, is an important way of putting the events of our lives in helpful perspective. I recently read the quote of a skeptical unbeliever that stopped me in my tracks. They said the church is the parasite, it owns the best property, it doesn't pay any taxes, and it doesn't help anybody. But we, but we know better. That is why we're here. Because this is a nourishing station. I like that, don't you? Nourishing sta station. We know that when I a predator attacks a group of animals, they try to isolate away from the group. And we are here because it pleases God. Don't remember, always remember that we're here in his presence. This is a holy place. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls to his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. Luke 15, 5 and 3. You see, a main reason, well, the main reason for being here is because it is where God wants us to be, because it brings us joy. Are you joyful right now, being together? Is that right? Good. You see, we are, we are that way. I know you have a thousand things in your life right now that uh, are not lost. You could go and get them within a minute or so, I'm sure, but when you start here, but when there is something you cannot find, like your car keys or your remote control or your cell phone, and you look at them for it, there it is, and you rejoice. But there is no greater source of joy than being found in the care of the great shepherd. Now during summer vacation time, there was one church who, you know, there are signs outside the church and they displayed this message. I'll try and say it so I don't mess it up. <laughs> It says, the sign says, sure you can worship God with a fishing pole in your hand, but when was the last time you caught a, caught a trout and he told you your sins are forgiven? Sure you can worship God with a fishing pole in your hand, but when was the last time a trout told you your sins are forgiven? <laughs> God rejoices when we are in his flock with others. And rejoicing is the theme of all the three parallels in this chapter that we read together. Lost sheep is returned. And you remember the lady lost the coin. She found the coin. The lost coin is found. And you remember that guy who came back to the family and the lost son comes home. Do you know that nesting feeling of having all your children under one roof? Do you know the peace that all your children are and grandchildren have a faith relationship with God, Jesus? 
And today you have the ability to bring joy to God. Today you have brought joy to God. Now there's a story, another book story, of a chaplain who attended a medical center who stopped introducing himself to a, a lady who had just been demitted the day before. A gentleman sat in the car at the door, uh, a chair near the door and said nothing. The lady was under the covers and had her back turned to me and never looked at me. But after introducing myself in such no uncertain words, told me she did not have any respect for the church. She apparently had a bad church experience and had told God it would be just her husband and herself. Now I was courteous as could be, mildly trying to defend the bride of Christ. I left sad, but not because she was a sheep without a shepherd, but a shepherd without a sheep or without a flock. Now you may be here this morning like a sheep without a flock or a church family. You may be one who has nibbled away a little bit at a time. You may be content going one-on-one -on -one with God, but God is not rejoicing because you are more vulnerable and not thriving as you only can in a group. You may be here this morning without an awesome relationship with Jesus Christ. But Jesus is the only one who can give you real purpose and direction in life. Jesus is the only one who loved you so much, he left heaven's perfection to come to this sinful earth to rescue sinners like you and me. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Mr. Brain will sing another song for us. I thank you, Greg. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Yeah. 
you know that we're um, please please be in prayer for um, Lou that was here last week that was playing the piano. He fell and broke his wrist and his arm, so be in prayer for him. And then also um, we had an ex-resident pass away the other day, Lou Balkholtz. And I know um, she came to church here, Lou. Uh, she was, Karen uh, Risley took care of her a lot. Uh, but she was a long time resident, so be in prayer for the Buck Hall's family. Okay, let's stand. <laughs> See you all. Thank you for coming. Keep smiling. And I don't know if anybody's going for breakfast or not, but don't forget that I had that open this morning. Thank you much. And may all of you go forward in peace this day. That your week will be just a wonderful week, a positive week. And don't forget, look to the Lord in all His glory every day that we're alive. Smile and smile. He's over there. Keep smiling. Keep on smiling. Thank you. Please join hands together as we sing God is good. Oh my God. Here we go. All right.